Captain Coder here again with another Clash of Code 15 minute challenge. Gonna hop into one of these. For those of you who don't know, Clash of Code is a programming challenge presented by Code in Game where you compete with up to eight people in a, in a public match, it's up to eight people in a uh, 15 minute challenge where you have to solve some programming problem in a language of your choice. I'm going to be using C sharp today. Been on a C sharp streak lately. And we're going to dive in here in uh, about a minute or less, depending. Oh, we got we got eight people. So it's it's starting out. All right. We got a reverse mode puzzle here. All right. So in reverse mode, you don't get a problem statement, but instead you get a set of inputs and outputs and you have to figure out a program. You have to write a program that given those inputs produces that output. So let's take a look here. The input John three, and then a series of arithmetic problems. We get John got two divided by three. All right, so I'm not, ugh. it's gonna be tricky here, I think. Um, we're gonna have to have John, the, looks like the first thing is so-and-so got two out of three ah i think I, I got it this seems to be some sort of grade checker so you have a student's name or a name of sorts then you have a number that tells you how many problems you're going to get and you have a series of arithmetic problems um, looks like you can have addition subtraction multiplication and division and then the answer that john or whoever it is got so that's what it looks like here so we're going to come in. We just got to get the person's name. All right. So student's name and then int question amount. I'm going to create a variable here called int correct. It starts out at zero. The goal is that in this loop here, we're going to loop through all of the questions. And every time we get one right, we're going to increase correct. If we don't get it right, we're going to we're not going to increase correct. And then we're going to end up displaying at the end console dot right line student got correct out of question amount like this. So essentially we have to write a, our answer is going to do this here. So this is what I call an aggregation problem an aggregate. Anytime you have some sort of chunk of data that you have to process and you're accumulating some value this is an aggregate problem so we're aggregating the number of correct values and in this case it's based on the number they got right oh i got a little typo here instead of god i got got okay let's look at this input here we need to be able to do i, I i'm assuming based on our inputs it's always going to be integer operator integer equals integer so we can we can i'm going to assume that's the format we're going to get reading in and so i'm just going to come in here we have a question um and i'm gonna well, we, we need three things we need int left operand int right operand and then an int um answer and then there's going to be a, 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 a the the thing that we're going to parse in here is the type of operator so i'm going to use a care for that i'm going to call this operator um like that so the left operator uh, left operand i'm going to break this into tokens so i'm going to take my question i'm going to say tokens is equal to I'm going to take the string here and I'm going to split it up on white space. Oh, this should be an array. Okay. So we're going to have a uh, care operator. What a, I'm assuming that, that I'm going to figure out what this error actually means when I get there. Coming it out just for a second here. Left operand is going to be the first token parsed as an int. Okay, so I'm gonna do 
uh, int dot parse tokens at index zero. Okay, my right operand me tokens at index two because I got zero, one, two. And then my answer is going to be tokens at four, zero, one, two, three, four. Okay. And then my operator is going to be um, tokens at index uh, zero, one. Okay. And I'll, I'll change this to a string. I think it wants it to be a string. Or is operator reserved keyword? Let's try op. Ooh, operator is a reserved keyword in C sharp. It looks like I didn't know that. All right, let's let's run this just to make sure my program. I don't get any exceptions running, so I'm logically breaking this out into pieces. I didn't crash, so that's a good sign that I was able to sort of get each of these things parsed out properly. And now that I have the things, I sort of need to do uh, a check and say, well, based on my operator, I do something something different. Um, and so this is the, the I'm going to change this to student answer. All right. So now I'm going to end up with, um, actual answer equals something. And then, so for now I'm going to do negative one. I'm going to say, if student answer is equal to the actual answer, correct plus plus, I'm going to increment correct. So that's the basic idea here is I need to do some math. If it's, if the, the math was correct, I'm going to increment correct. So uh, the, the way I'm going to approach this right now, and if I have enough time, I'll come back and refactor. We got nine, about nine minutes left, so I'm feeling pretty good. I'm going to come in here and say that the actual answer um, is going to be based off our operator. So if our operator is addition, answer is going to be equal to left operand plus right operand okay else if our operator is equal to subtraction and we got answer equals left operand minus right operand else if our operator is slash division answer equals left operand divided by right operand and then finally we have it well i'm gonna i'm gonna put in an exception i'm gonna do else if you might just do an else here because you say okay well i know there aren't any other options but let's check out answer equals left operand times right operand right oh right 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 operand my brain couldn't couldn't get that one going and then i'll have this this other else here i'm going to say else console dot error dot right line um discovered or found unexpected operator op just to give us a little bit of a hint hopefully that doesn't come out in that regard and um, I might throw an exception here to do it, but we're, we're in a, a quick coding battle. So for, for brevity, we're not going to do that. All right. So I passed that one. Um, let's see how I do on all my test cases here. Okay. Running through them. Looks like we're doing pretty well. Okay, so I could just submit right now and go to it, but I'm gonna, you're trying to get the, the reverse mode and fastest. If, if I was doing like truly competitive, I would submit this now. But let, let's look at what I could do better here. Um, just from like a coding standpoint, this main method is huge. Oh, I'm gonna copy this just in case I break something. I can always put it back and fix it in. Uh, this main method is just super long. In my opinion, it's a little gross. You should try to break this up into methods if you can. If you were writing code that's more, you want to be able to think through it a little bit better. 
I would break this up into some methods. Um, and I might write a method. All right, so we're gonna do something something a little fancy. We got enough time. Don't always have enough time this, but I'm gonna do something fancy here. I'm gonna say um, I'm gonna use a dictionary to make this a little bit nicer. Now, I'm gonna write. So in C sharp, you have we can do some uh, what, what's considered functional esque programming, and I'm gonna have a function a public int um, addition. Uh, so public add, I'm gonna call it add, int left, int right. Um, and we're gonna say that we have a, that it, when you do add, you just do left plus right like that. Okay, public int div for divide, int left, int right, left divide by right. This might be super silly to do this way. I, should, I could do it. At, we'll, we'll revise it a couple times if we have time. Sub, int left, int right, left minus right, public int, mole, int left, int right. Anyone who knows me knows I am a uh, programming language nerd. So I've written a lot of parsers and compilers before, and for some reason I love doing this it's kind of it's kind of dumb a lot of maybe not dumb but uh overkill for what we're doing here okay so i'm gonna actually write a uh i'm gonna i'm gonna pull this out into a dictionary okay so i'm gonna create a dictionary and it's gonna go from strings to a, a function that takes in two arguments and produces an argument. So it's gonna go to, and I think we can do that here with func, is that right? Int, int, int. So in C sharp, this is saying, I'm gonna have a character, a string that maps to, it's like an array, but you can use strings in Python. You might call it a, they're called dictionaries. In Java, these are hash tables, um, ops. So I'm gonna create this dictionary here. Is these function I'm gonna say okay well the ops for plus goes to add can I do this is that uh, equals equals not goes to equals um, add oh I'm sad that an object already required for the non-static oh I gotta make these static static I bet that'll work now so now I can assign this so it turns out that static methods regular methods kind of too are functions like this and i can refer to them as such so let me make all these static and i'm going to show you why this was overkill in just a second here oh i need someone to tell me when i'm almost at a time i'm at two minutes here two minutes 30. okay so we got ops minus equals sub ops division equals div ops oh and i gotta do double quotes these aren't characters multiplication equals mole is that what i called them all wants these to be a string okay so now i've defined this here the, the the crazy thing now maybe not crazy but i can i can actually get rid of all this code here all of that gross if else stuff that's taking up all that space and I can replace it with um, ops of op dot invoke left operand right operand it does and this will do the same thing so I've just put all of that into this dictionary this is something that is often referred to as like functional style programming. So you do this a lot in functional programming where you can like use um, functions and methods as variables. And we've sort of done it. it says, okay, look up which function I should use and then invoke that function, get the result back. All right, let's, ha I'm, I'm super happy. I don't have time to do that. Let's test, do the test case again, just to see. You got a minute left. Oh, I broke it. I broke it. Um, the dictionary and how exception key not found the given key X. Oh, oh, I, this needed to be X, not not star.
Okay, okay, there we go. So the reason I say like this is overkill down here, I can actually just say, oh, L R C sharp provides a syntax where I can actually do it this way. So I can define that function directly in the code here. I'm out of time, uh, but I could go through and rewrite all this. I'm gonna go ahead and submit this, but you see why this might feel like overkill. You can create what's called an anonymous function. You don't give it the name add div sub or mole, and instead you just define it right in line. All right, I'm clicking submit. Oh no, clash is completed. Did I, did I get my submission in there? I did, okay. <laughs> All right. So there you have it, I'm gonna click share my code again. And uh, let's take a peek at what some other people did. Some of these people got this in there super fast. I think it took me more than a minute to even figure out what I was supposed to do. Uh, Cedar Capian, Kayapin. Let's see what they did for their solution. Okay, theirs is in JavaScript. So these read lines, they get the questions right. They loop through each question. Oh, oh, this is a really clever solution. In the following way, they say, okay, well, let's replace all of the equal signs. All the assignment, like inside of the string, we're gonna replace those with double equals. We're gonna replace all of the uh, X's with, with asterisks. And then we're gonna eval. So they go through and they, they write, they have the program rewrite each line as new JavaScript and then eval it. And because it should eval as a Boolean because of this double equals, it's gonna give them a true or false value. And then they can increment that way. I really like that. That, oh, that's a really clever solution. Okay, nice. Got one in Ruby. Let's take a look at the Python one. Three minutes, Python three. They did the, essentially a very similar solution on theirs too, I like it. So Python and JavaScript are interpreted language. Maybe C Sharp has some kind of eval. Um, I usually try to avoid eval like the plague. It's a little bit, uh, considered a dangerous bad practice, but what a clever little solution here. Essentially the same solution in um, Python. They split on the equals and they have the left side. They, they evaluate the left side and then check if it's double equal to the right side. Pretty cool. Pretty, pretty neat little solution. Let's see what this uh, Ruby solution looks like. I'm actually not a Ruby programmer, so uh, I can often get the gist I have, I have a lot of programming background so i can often get the gist but i've never programmed in ruby or i haven't programmed more than than very very trivially i wrote a um an api in ruby once that was like the beginnings of a scrabble word checker the solution is the same where they are doing an eval thing so they replace equals with double equals and x with star eval and then they uh they do even an even more clever thing where they sum up they so they create a list of ones and zeros where ones are the correct and zeros are the incorrect and then they add them up together and then they output them there all right cool little solutions here i hope you enjoyed this uh clash of code i hope you got something out of it I think these are super fun. You should go and do some of them. If you uh, enjoyed this, hit that like button. If you want to see some more, hit that subscribe button. And you're welcome to come back anytime. Have a beautiful day.